Welcome to your lecture on thermal chemistry. You are going to need a calculator. We're not going to do a lot of math, but the actual problems that you'll be doing with this particular subject or topic, you are going to need a calculator. So please have one of those with a plus sign, negative sign, minus sign, excuse me, uh, multiplication sign, division sign. Uh, probably a good idea to have parentheses that you can put expressions in to count as one thing when we start getting into the multiple expressions to an answer. I also recommend that you have a pencil or pen and paper so that you can write problems down, work problems, write diagrams down as necessary, your critical information that's pointed out to you, get that written down, as well as any uh, concerns, questions for understanding and clarity that you may have. Hopefully we'll be able to answer them all by the end of this lecture, but if we don't, please, please, please make sure that you address those with your instructor before you take the assessment for this unit. So let's get started. Energy diagrams are diagrams that give us a very good idea of whether or not a reaction is spontaneous or non-spontaneous means it actually will go forward or it will stop going forward. And, oh, those are such good definitions. Let's look at that. So, spontaneous means that the reaction will go forward without any help. It forms products without any help. That is a big and important word. You need to know both the name as well as the definition on that. Non-spontaneous means that it has to actually have some type of help. So it will only form products if help is given. There we go. Make sure you know that one too. So the difference between spontaneous and non-spontaneous. I'm going to give you a couple of hints as we start looking at diagrams. There are some uh, structures to the diagrams that will allow us to determine immediately whether something is a spontaneous reaction or whether it is a non-spontaneous reaction. But you do need to know what they mean. Other words you need to know are enthalpy. Enthalpy is a big one to make sure you understand. Put, put that in red. It is the heat in a reaction. This delta H always means enthalpy and it's the heat of a reaction. Please, please, please make sure that you know the term enthalpy because there's another term that goes right after it which is called entropy. That's a difference. Enthalpy talks about heat. Entropy talks about the disorder in a system. Disorder means how much chaos there is in a particular system. So if I was going from a solid to a liquid, we already know that a solid is very uniform and around a fixed position. But liquid is not. It's a little bit more random. So in the case of going from a solid to a liquid, there is an increase in entropy. And the symbol for entropy, we usually use that as delta S. Entropy. To go from a liquid to a gas, again, imagine your particles. The liquid, they're a little bit more random because they flow of each other, but when they're a gas, they can be anywhere. So again, you'd have an increase in your delta S or an increase in your entropy. So that is a big, big, big one that you need to know. The energy of activation is the amount of energy required for a reaction to occur. How much energy is necessary for a reaction to actually occur? That means that while a reaction may have a certain amount of energy it requires to go, if it is like, say, a non-spontaneous uh, equation, and I'll put non-spontaneous, which is where you usually see it, non-spontaneous reaction. Remember that Rx means reaction. It's just a shortcut of how it's written. Non-spontaneous reaction requires a certain more to be put into it so that the enemy, enter, the equation or the reaction actually go forth. So make sure that you know 
what energy of activation is. And again, I will show you where all these can be easily discerned on a diagram. And then we have the activation complex. In a reaction, as a reaction goes from reactants to products, there is usually a breaking of bonds and reshuffling them a new way to make the products. That taking away and putting back is what we call the arrangements of atoms. And it's usually found at the top of the energy of activation. So that is what we call the activation complex. If there's an energy of activation at the top of the energy of activation, there is the activation complex. So let's look at the first energy diagram. This is a spontaneous exothermic reaction. So how do we recognize a spontaneous exothermic reaction? Well, first of all, there is no heel. And you'll see what I'm talking about later. There's no heel. That's what makes it spontaneous. There's no heel. What makes it exothermic is that your reactants are higher than your products. Your reactants are up here. Your products are down here. That tells you that it's exothermic. What else tells me it's exothermic? Well, the fact of that, your delta H, remember we said delta H was heat? Okay, so delta H is on the side of the products. So that's another thing that tells me that this is an exothermic reaction. It's spontaneous because there's no heal. It's exothermic because the reactants are higher than the products and the fact that the delta H is on the side of the products. That tells me that this is a spontaneous exothermic reaction. Okay? The delta H or the amount of heat that goes into this reaction is the distance between the reactants and the products, no matter where they are. The distance between the reactants and the products is the heat. And since this is an exothermic reaction, the value of this heat would be given a negative. That's another clue that tells me it's exothermic if the value is a negative. So what do we have? We have spontaneous because there's no heal. We have exothermic because our reactants are higher than our products. We have exothermic because our delta H is on the side of the products. We have exothermic because it's exothermic. Our value for delta H is going to be negative. Take a moment, pause, and look at it. Okay, so what are we saying? We're saying that the reactants, in this case, have a high potential energy. The products have a low potential energy, but the products have a high kinetic energy because the reactant is going. When you see this, this tells me, when you see the fact that you have reactants at a high potential energy and the products are low and the delta H is on the side of the products, what this tells me is that there are more there's more energy in the reactants than in the products. Why and how would I know that? Because if there wasn't more energy in the reactants than the products, you just have products with no heat being given off. But when the heat in the reactants is converted and used to make products, that means there's excess heat because the products don't need as much energy in them as the reactants had in them. Pause the video for a moment, make sure you understand it, and then press play. Okay, this is a spontaneous endothermic reaction. It is spontaneous 
because again there's no hill keep that in mind when you see the hill you'll know it is an endothermic reaction because my reactants are lower than my products so my, here are my reactants here are my products it is endothermic because my delta H is on the side of the reactants okay hold on got a little bit more to go what is the sign of that delta H well when I look at the sign of that delta H it has a value that is positive so that's what my delta H is it's positive so the reactants tell me that these reactants require energy to get up to where the products are and if the reactants require energy to get up to where the products are that tells me that there is more energy or heat in the products than in the reactants because these reactants and this energy make the products okay so let's review this again make sure we know what we're looking at this is spontaneous because there's no heal this is endothermic because your reactants are lower than your products it is endothermic because your delta H or energy or heat is on the side of the reactants it is endothermic because the value of this delta H is going to be positive and because of that we now know that there's more energy in the products than there is in the reactants because the reactants requires that energy in order to make the products This is a non-spontaneous endothermic reaction. It is non-spontaneous because, you ready for this? There's a hill. Does everybody see this? That's a hill. That's a hill. It is endothermic because the reactants are higher than the products just like it was in the exothermic react uh, in the other reaction reactions are higher than the products and it is endothermic because the delta H is on the side of the reactants so if I go on and look at this my delta H is still between the reactants and the products but now I have a EA. So my delta H still runs between the reactants and products. This value is positive for delta H. But now that I have a non-spontaneous endothermic reaction, I have that hill to contend with. And where there's a hill, there is going to be an energy of activation because you have to get up that hill to get to the products. The energy of activation always runs from the reactant to the top of the hill. So my energy of activation is from where the reactants are to the top of this hill. That is always going to be my energy of activation. And at the top of this hill, and I'll probably show this in a second, this is where the activation complex is. This is where that randomness, where that disorder, the breaking of bonds and putting bonds back together. Okay? So in looking at this, quick review. Non-spontaneous, because there's a hill endothermic reactants lower than products endothermic delta H on the side of the reactants endothermic delta H is going to have a positive sign it's non-spontaneous 
has an energy of activation. At the top of that hill is the activation complex. Always, always, Delta H runs from the reactants to the products. Always, always, the energy of activation runs from the reactants to the top of the hill. So if I wanted to know, however, the energy that is put into this reaction, I look at my delta H so I know whether it's spontaneous or non-spontaneous. If I want to know the total amount of energy necessary for this reaction to occur, I have to have my EA. So my total to occur is equal to the value of my energy of activation. Okay? Non-spontaneous exothermic reaction. Non-spontaneous exothermic reaction. It is non-spontaneous because there's a hill. It is exothermic because my reactants are higher than my products. It is exothermic because my delta H is on the side of my products. The value for that delta H is going to be negative because it is exothermic. And because it is a non-spontaneous and it has that heel, you're still going to have that EA right here. because it has a hill. But notice that the EA for a non-spontaneous exothermic reaction is a lot shorter a hill than for the non-spontaneous endothermic reaction. Either way, when I'm calculating my delta H runs from reactants to products, but this time my EA is a little bit different. This time my EA is going to run still from the reactant to the top of the hill, but it's nowhere involved with my delta H. And then, of course, at the top of the hill is where you're going to find the activation complex or where all that uh, rearrangement of molecules is going to begin and atoms are going to occur before you can get to your products. All right, look at that one closely. Make sure you know why it is non-spontaneous. It is exothermic, a reaction. What is that delta H? What is that EA? What is that AC? Why is it exothermic? Okay, this is a non-spontaneous exothermic reaction with a catalyst. What does a catalyst do? A catalyst allows for a reaction to occur without changing itself. It can be used over and over again. It has nothing to do with the actual products that are produced. It just helps it along. It's like if you go in a restaurant and let's just say you have sugar in warm tea okay so you put sugar in your warm tea if you just leave it there you're not going to really taste the sugar until you get like probably halfway through the warm tea because of the movement of the cup but if you put a spoon in there and stir it around stir that sugar up it will dissolve fully in that tea now when you drink that tea you can taste the sugar in the tea that spoon would be your catalyst you can take that spoon out without it affecting the tea and you can use that spoon as many times as you want. That's what a catalyst does. Same thing here. So this is non-spontaneous because it's got a heel. 
It is exothermic because your reactants are higher than your products. Your delta H is on the side of your products. And it has a catalyst. Well, where is the catalyst? Let's show you that. There's my delta H, which occurs between my reactants and products. And there's my EA, which we already know. But a catalyst helps a reaction go. If you were a car on this hill, no, I can't drive. But if you were a car on this hill and you were trying to get up this hill, you could go here and that's pretty much it. If someone came behind you, gave you a push, you might manage to get over. But what if a bulldozer came and just totally scooped that hill out of the way? Wouldn't that be a straight shot for your car to go down the hill? Okay, that's what a catalyst does for a reaction. It actually lowers the energy of activation so that the reaction can go forth if it doesn't totally remove the energy of activation. So this is non-spontaneous because of the hill. Exothermic because reactants are higher than the products. The delta H is on the side of the products. And the delta H, if it's written, its value is going to be a negative. With a catalyst because that catalyst is going to cut that hill down. Look at it carefully. Pause, draw as you see need fit. And then move on. And of course the activation complex is at the top of the hill where there's a rearrangement of atoms and molecules to make products. All right, now look at the energy diagram. We got numbers. We could do all kinds of stuff with the numbers, but let's look at this first one. In this energy diagram, our reactants, <coughs> excuse me, are between 50 and 55. Our products are about 22. I think this is probably juxtaposed let me see if I can fix that oh that looks so much better <laughs> okay so a couple of things before we get started first of all when we talk about delta H the unit is usually in kilojoules that means any number you have has to have kilojoules now I don't know about your instructor but as far as I'm concerned if you don't have units it's wrong so all Delta H values must be in kilojoules or whatever unit they give you. But it must. That means that if you give a number and there's no unit, you don't have a number. Same thing when we're talking about thermochemistry, uh, phase change energies diagram. If it ain't in calories, you ain't got no number. Okay? So just make sure you know, are aware, and that, that happens. All right? Okay. So let's get on to what this is. So here we have a non-spontaneous, because it has a heel. Your reactants are higher than your products, so it is exothermic, as well as the fact that delta H is where your product side is, so it's exothermic. And because the delta H is where your product is, we expect the value of delta H to be negative. So let's see what we have. Non-spontaneous exothermic reaction. My delta H runs from my reactants to my products. And since my reactants are at 50, my products are at 22, then 50 minus 22 is equal to what? 28? So I expect my delta H to be 28 kilojoules. And because this is an exothermic reaction, the value of this is going to be a negative 22 kilojoules. Negative 28, excuse me, 28 kilojoules. Now, I need to look at my EA or my energy of activation. My energy of activation is going to be 5 kilojoules 
because from my reactants to the top of my heel, off by a little bit, top of my heel, there we go, is five kilojoules. So from here to here is my energy of activation. And from here to here is my L to H. Does my energy of activation have a value of positive or negative? No. The only one that has a real value of positive and negative that's of, their, of importance, definitely, is my delta H. Because this little negative right here tells me it is exothermic. I know that if I put this reaction together, I should have hot heat coming out of it. In other words, I should feel some heat coming out of it because it's exothermic. It's giving off heat into the environment. Okay, here we go. This time, we have a non-spontaneous endothermic reaction. Non-spontaneous because the reactants are lower than the products, and the delta H is on the side of the reactants. It is non-spontaneous. It's exothermic. It's non-spontaneous because there's a big old hill right here. That means that we have a delta H that we have to deal with and an EA that we're going to have to deal with. Our delta H is running from the products to the reactants. Reactants are at 80, products are at 105. The difference between 80 and 105 is equal to 25. So I have 25, and again, remember it's kilojoules. This is kilojoules. And because it is a endothermic reaction, it's a positive 25 kilojoules. Okay. Now for me, I require that you have a positive in front of it. 25 to me tells me you might be able to do the calculation, but you don't know whether it's a endo or exo. But please make sure you check with your instructor. If your instructor does not require a positive, then you don't need to use one, but generally a positive is an indicator. Your energy of activation is going to run from your reactants all the way to the top of that hill. That means you're going from 80 all the way up to 118. The difference between that is going to be, what, 38? kilojoules for your energy of activation. Okay? Again, it runs all the way from the reactants to the top of that hill. So, what are we saying? We're saying that in order for this reaction to go forward, you need 38 kilojoules because it's got to get over that hill. But the amount of energy that that reaction required to be endothermic overall is going to be 25. Why? Because this is going to cancel itself out. Whatever energy you put on this side is going to cancel itself coming on this side. Let me write that a little bit clearer so you get a better understanding. There we go. The energy, the extra bit of energy going up this hill is going to be canceled out going down the hill. So in the end, you still only have the delta H. So I hope you understand that. Okay, this is spontaneous or non-spontaneous. Indo or exo. Energy of activation, yes or no. Okay, let's see what we got. Spontaneous, exothermic. Spontaneous because there's no heal. Exothermic because your reactants are lower than your products and your delta H is on the side of your products. So when I calculate my delta H then, I look at where my reactants are, which is 100, where my products are, which is 40. The difference between them is equal to 60 kilojoules. 
And since this is exothermic, it should have a positive or negative sign. If you chose negative, good job. Good job. Now, energy of activation. Do you see any hills? No. So there is no energy activation. There is no hill. And there is no energy of activation. So it would be equal to zero kilojoules if I asked you. So that's one way. Just looking at the uh, energy diagrams, that's one way to determine whether a reaction is spontaneous, non-spontaneous whether it's uh, endothermic or exothermic, whether there's a catalyst or not. And then there's another way to determine the reaction. So before I go into that, let me talk to you about another way to determine the reaction. When I have reactants and products, just like we talked about, if the delta H is on the side of the products, then it's exothermic. If the delta H is on the side of the reactants, then it's endothermic. I would strongly suggest that you write this down because <laughs> it's going to be helpful to you. Okay. If I have a reaction... And on the side, I have delta H is equal to a negative value, whatever that value might be. This is exothermic. If I have a reactant creates products, and they tell me that the delta H is equal to a positive number, whatever that number may be, this is endothermic. This is not looking at a diagram. This is just looking straight at a written equation. Again, I suggest strongly that you write that down and you know that. And finally, if I have a reactant, oops, there we go. If I have a reactant, it goes to a product. And I find that there is something written above the arrow. That is usually a good indicator that whatever written above the arrow is a catalyst. And that tells me this is a non-spontaneous reaction. Okay, I think we're ready. So... Let's look at this. AB plus delta H produces A plus B. Is that endothermic or exothermic? It's on the side, the delta H is on the side of the reactants. This is an endothermic reaction which will have a positive delta H value. If I have A plus B produces AB plus delta H with the delta H on the side of the products, endothermic or exothermic reaction it will be an exothermic reaction with your delta H with a negative value look at these this is exothermic because the delta H is on the side of the products this is endothermic because the delta H is on the side of the reactants Please note one thing. There is a plus sign in front of both delta H's. That plus sign does not mean the value. So it does not mean the value of delta H. It is just added. To the reaction just like I was adding another reactant it's just adding it to the reaction this is a non-spontaneous 
endothermic reaction, how do I know? It is non-spontaneous because it has the electricity up here. And it is endothermic because the delta H is on the side of the products. Once again, it is added to the products, but that's not the value. Its value as delta H is going to be a positive value because it is an endothermic reaction. It's just added to the reactant side. Down here, we have a non-spontaneous because there is manganese 4 peroxide, manganese 4 oxide added to it. That's a catalyst. And it is exothermic. because the delta H is on the side of the products, but the delta H, if it's written alone, is going to have a negative fat, uh, value to it. And it has catalyst, again, because there's something written up here. Now, can electricity be considered a catalyst? We generally don't because it's like you're just putting it through electricity, but it does help it along because it is non-spontaneous. But this is clearly a catalyst because this is clearly a substance of manganese 4 oxide. This is a non-spontaneous exothermic reaction. It is non-spontaneous because there's heat and it's exothermic reaction because the delta H is on the side of the products and so it's going to have a negative value. Again, this is heating something up, sending electricity through. We don't really look at those as a catalyst. A catalyst would clearly be a substance or another type of tool that would be used. This is an example of questions that would come to you for the energy diagram. Let's look at the first one. Is the reaction in the diagram exothermic, endothermic, neither, or both? Well, when we look at it, we find that our reactants are higher than our products. So this would be an exothermic reaction. And I, th I think this kind of answers it for yourself. Yep. Okay. Which letters would represent the reactants? Look at the letters. Remember, your reactants are always on the left side. So the letters that represent the reactants are going to be A plus B. Where would delta H be written into the reactant? Is it going to be a reaction? Is it a reactant or a product? Since this is exothermic, your delta H would be written on which side? If you chose the product side, you are absolutely correct. Question, is a catalyst used in this reaction? Remember that a catalyst will cut down your energy of activation. Well, you got to know where your energy of activation is, right? Here is your energy of activation from the reactants to the top. Is something cutting that down? That's your question. And since the answer is no, then no, a catalyst is not used in this reaction. Is this reaction spontaneous or non-spontaneous? There's that hill, so that tells us it is non-spontaneous. What is the measurement of the activation energy for this reaction in kilojoules? Well, it starts out at 2. It goes to 5, right? So that should be equal to 3 kilojoules. The answer is 3 kilojoules. Excellent. What is the measurement of the activation energy for this reaction already done? What is the measurement of delta H? Delta H is from your reactants 
to your products, right? And since it's at the products are at one, the reactant is at two, it should be equal to one kilojoule. And the answer is one kilojoule. And it's got a negative Y because this is an exothermic reaction. Okay? Do the reactants or the products in the reaction contain more energy? The reactants contain more energy because, remember, since this is exothermic, this is going to be plus delta H, which is the leftover of the energy from your reactants. Write the equation for this reaction, including the delta H. Well, our equation is going to be your reactants, A plus B, produces your product, C plus D. And it says include your delta H. Since this is exothermic, it will be on the side of your products. Okay. And they're given the value to the delta H. If it was written in equation, you're going to have A plus B produces C plus D plus 1 kilojoule. If this reaction is in a container, would it feel hot or cold to the touch? It is exiting heat from the container. So are your hands going to be hot or cold to the touch? You should choose hot to the touch. All right. If you have any questions, go ahead and write those down so you can address them with your instructor. Let's do another one. Oh, this one kind of looks like it's done for us, but we got to figure this out. Is reaction in the diagram to the left exo, endo, neither, or both? Look at your diagram. Your products are higher than your reactants, so this is an endothermic reaction. Which letters represent your reactants? Reactants are always on the left side, so the answer to that would be A plus B. Where would delta H be written to the reaction? Would it be a reactant or products? Since this is endothermic, delta H is written on the side of the reactants. Is a catalyst used in this? Again, you see an energy of activation. If you do, do you see something cutting it down? This answer would be no. Is it spontaneous or non-spontaneous? There is a hill. So your answer is, it is non-spontaneous. What is the measurement of the activation energy for this reaction? What is the measurement for the activation energy? Remember, activation energy goes from the bottom to the top of the hill. So that's going to be your 4 kilograms. What is the measurement of the delta H? Your delta H is going to go from your reactants to your products. Reactants here, products here. So your delta H in this case is 1 kilojoule, but it's a positive. Remember that that's going to be a positive 1 kilojoule because it is endothermic. Do the reactants or the products in this reaction contain more energy? Well, which one is holding the energy? If energy had to be added to the side of the reactants, remember, so we could get up the hill, that means it's going to be encased in the products. So the products in this case are going to hold more energy. Then they want to write the equation for this reaction, include delta H. Since we know our delta H is 1 kilojoule, that's going to be A plus B produces C plus D. But on the side of A plus B, we're going to put our delta H, which is 1 kilojoule. So A plus B plus 1 kilojoule produces C plus D.
If this reaction were run in a container, would it be hot or cold to the touch? It is endothermic, so it is absorbing the heat from its surroundings. So when you touch it, is it going to be hot or cold? If you feel it's going to be cold, you are absolutely correct. So let's look at this one. This one, it says, is the reaction in the diagram to the left exothermic, endothermic, neither or both? Look at it closely. Where are the reactants in relation to the products? If you chose exothermic, good job. Next question, where would delta H be written into the reaction? As a reactant or as a product? Your delta H... It's exothermic, so it's losing energy, so it's going to be written on the side of the products. Next question, is a catalyst used in this reaction? I'm going to give you a little clue. Here you see the hill, but this is what the hill is going to look like. So use that as your clue. If you chose that it's a catalyst, absolutely. Is this reaction spontaneous or non-spontaneous? Does it have a hill or doesn't it? It does have a hill, therefore it is non-spontaneous. What is the measurement of the activation energy for this reaction in kilojoules? Your activation energy, remember, goes from the base of your reactants to the top of the hill. Look at that. And if you chose 2 kilojoules, you're absolutely correct. If a catalyst is used, how much energy is being saved by its inclusion into the reaction? How far down does a catalyst bring that hill so the reaction can go forward? Well, if you chose one kilojoule, you're correct because the catalyst was two kilojoules. It dropped by one kilojoule, and now it's one kilojoule. And then... What is the measurement of delta H in kilojoules? Remember, delta H is from the reactants to the product. So if you chose one kilojoule, you are absolutely correct. And if you chose a negative, that shows that it is an exothermic reaction. Again, please, please, please don't forget the sign of your delta H's. If you don't have that correct sign, you probably won't get those points, or you'll probably only get partial of those points. And finally, do the reactants or the products in this reaction contain more energy? Your reactants lose energy as they become products. That means your products are your products plus delta H. So if you chose that your reactants contain more energy than your products, you are absolutely correct. This ends this section of your thermochemistry energy diagrams lecture. Please make sure that you go back, go back over these problems, do these problems. Make sure that your questions that you have about these are answered or you've talked to your instructor about them.